Welcome friends to another live. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Today I decided to do this live. My hair's not done. I'm just kind of chill working on stuff, but I wanted to wash my veggies and make my lunch salad with you guys. I thought it would be a really cool thing to do with you and answer some questions if you have any questions. So yeah, with that, let's get started. Um, I'm going to have a very, very low fat, kind of a mustard date dressing for my lunch salad. But first we have to wash vegetables. Um, and the only reason I'm doing this is because they have to get washed. We're taking a lot of these tomatoes camping and the boxes back here, but I'm just going to wash one box for right now. And I have to wash my lettuce. So I thought might as well do it on camera with you guys sharing the Norwex fruit and veg wash. If you guys are interested in any of the Norwex products, you can find a link in my bio for Norwex, or you can just send me a direct message and we can chat about the products. Uh, so yeah, what I'm going to do, I'm going to start with washing the tomatoes. And if you guys have any questions about anything, really, you can feel free to post in the comments and all that cool stuff. So um, I'm only going to put maybe half a teaspoon of the fruit and veg wash. It's a pro, uh, it's an enzyme based wash. So it's natural. It's healthy. It's great for getting rid of anything on your fruits and veggies. So now that's in the water, I'm just going to fill my bowl with a little more water and I'm going to put my tomatoes in the water. So we'll just do that. Hope everyone's enjoying their day. Thank you so much for joining me as well. Hello, Erin. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. All right, I think that's good. Whoa, got this big thing of water. Okay, so yes, if you've missed, I added the fruit and veg wash from Norwex into the water and I'll just have to let it sit for a couple of minutes. And the cool thing that you could also do is use the Norwex fruit and veg cloth. It's kind of rough on one side and soft on the other side. Uh, so you can like scrubby your fruits and veggies if you want. And I have the Norwex drying rack, which is awesome for drying anything really. I just put fruits and veggies on it. Um, you're getting healthier just watching. <laughs> That's awesome. Those tomatoes are beauties, yes. Anyone who's watching, if you're in the Medford or Southern Oregon area, in Medford, they have a store called Smart Food Service and they sell cases of heirlooms and they are incredible. They're so good. So, 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 so good. And I eat a lot of tomatoes. Nate does too, but uh, they're my personal favorites. Um, so I eat a lot, a lot, a lot of tomatoes. So you just let them sit in here. And again, you could take the cloth and just give them a good scrubby if you want. Um, two main reasons why you'd want to wash your fruits and veggies when you bring them into the house is number one, they extend the life of your produce. So if you keep things on the counter, like we do, like oranges, mangoes, that kind of thing, lemons and limes too, um, you get less rotting faster, I guess, uh, or <laughs> should I say you, your fruits and veggies rot slower or ripen slower. Um, cause a lot of times you'll bring something in and if there's like bacteria or other things on your fruits and veggies, they go bad very fast. So washing them as soon as you bring them in the house is a great idea. The second reason, aside from getting rid of toxin, toxic pesticides or whatever, because it's going to help clean those off as well. Obviously it's not going to get rid of everything, but it's going to help a lot. Um, you also want to wash them to reduce your fruit fly uh, infestations. So fruit flies, they lay their eggs in the little crevices. And once the fruit starts to over ripen or starts to rot, that's when they hatch and then they 
They seem to multiply out of thin air. So washing your produce as soon as you bring it into the house, especially your fruit, is going to help a lot with any fruit fly kind of infestations and stuff. So once you have your fruit has been soaking and if you want, again, you can scrub them a little bit. Um, and then you just rinse them off. And I like to put them on the counter. So you could use another bowl, a separate bowl with clean water if you want. I'm just going to rinse and put them on the mat. <laughs> I ate half a giant green worm the other day. Oh my gosh, oh. <laughs> yeah, they, it happens. I mean, <laughs> those poor guys, I don't know, like being a vegan, it's hard because we know that you can not never be a perfect vegan. There's no such thing because there's going to be life that dies. But the whole point of being vegan is to do the least amount of harm, harm possible, right? So we do what we can, but that sucks that you have to eat a worm. Oh man, is that just water in the bowl? No, in the bowl we have wa just plain water and the fruit and veg wash from Norwex. Again, if you guys want the link for this, the link is in my bio. Um, I love the Norwex products, so that's why I use them, uh, but yeah. If you have any questions about any of the Norwex stuff, you can post. My friend Erin, I think, is in here. She can answer a lot of questions too. Um, but a worm, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's not gonna be a fun time. Um, oh, is my dad in here? Aw, I miss you, dad. <laughs> oh, I'm Debbie too, I miss you guys. Oh, they were supposed to come visit, but had a change of plans due to world events. So we've got a kitty back there. <laughs> oh my gosh. So yeah, just washing the fruit and then we will wash lettuce next. Check out the IGTV from last week too. Nice. Yes, IGTV, we, Aaron and I did an IGTV where we had a black light showing the bacteria on plates. That's up in my IGTV. So if you guys missed that, go check out that video because it's really cool. It's pretty eye-opening, <laughs> the amount of um, germs that are left over. So this is ew water. So I'm just gonna change the water. I'm gonna add some new water in. So I'm going to transfer these tomatoes over here so they can dry a little bit. Ooh. There we go. Awesome. And we will work on washing lettuce. Washing the lettuce and chopping the lettuce for my lunch salad that I'm going to make with you guys here. So we've got the water going. I don't have a lot of room here, but that's okay. It's a little small kitchen. So I'm going to put some, um, again, you don't need a lot. You really don't need a lot. Just a little bit. It's, the spray is nice to have in the car because when we're out and about, um, and we need fresh produce for snacks, like if we go to get grapes or apples or whatever, we have a bowl and water in the truck with our travel size of the Norwex and we'll just rinse off our produce in the truck for a snack, which is a great um, option. So, just get that a little mixed up. And then, this is how I chop my lettuce. This is my favorite way because I like it when they're small pieces. I don't like having really long pieces of lettuce in my salad. So what I do is I chop off the end and then I chop lengthwise a couple times, like maybe, maybe three times, just like so, or four. This one I'll do four. Then I chop this way and I chop very close so they're um, it's more like shredded lettuce. That's how I like to eat it. It's a lot easier to eat, I find. So I'll just do that. And now there are some people that say 
um, I should wash the lettuce before chopping it, but I feel like the um, it's negligible the amount of nutrients that end up in the water. So I mean, it's up to you. You can you can wash it first and then chop it, or chop it first and then wash it. Really, it's up to you. I find it's just easier that way. So once it's chopped, I add it to the water, and then I'll do the other one. I'm having two romaine hearts with my salad because they're a little bit small. So I wanna make sure that I get a good amount of lettuce in my salad. So I'll just chop that like that. And then go this way. Just like so. Hi guys, thanks for joining in. Sorry if I'm missing some questions. Anyone have any questions? Aw, I love that dad's in here. Hi, daddy. <laughs> oh, you guys are awesome. Okay, so we've got the lettuce done. So we're gonna put that in the water as well. Then, all we have to do is wash the lettuce. Just wash that really good. And again, you could let it sit in here for a minute or so. And another tip too, if you're doing raw vegan in the winter, um, we don't like eating cold salads right out of the fridge. So lettuce coming right out of the fridge is cold. Your cold cucumbers, your cold tomatoes, and it makes for a really cold salad. So in order to help with that, you could wash your lettuce just in warmer water, wash your tomatoes in warmer water, try to keep things on the counter at room temperature, and that will really, really help. How often do you sharpen your knives? Great question. Um, that The knives we sharpen like I would say every two to three days we sharpen them. These knives are cheap. We just bought them. They were like 24 bucks for three knives and they're our favorite knives. We really like those ones. Um, but yeah, we sharpen them about every two to three days. It depends. I like the sharp knives. So, <laughs> so once that's done, then I have a salad spinner here. This is the OXO brand salad spinner. This is like one of my favorite kitchen tools. And what I do is I take the strainer out and I'll pour all of this lettuce through the strainer. Um, I won't be able to show you guys that part, but you get the idea. So I'll just pour that into the strainer. Make sure I get all the lettuce in there. Then, then, see, as you can see, I've got all of the lettuce in here. Then I'm gonna rinse this lettuce under the sink water just to get uh, uh, some of the, the Norwex wash off. So I'll just rinse that really good. Just like so. Salad spinner, I love the salad spinner, it's awesome. There we go. So I've got the salad rinsed, ready to go. And you could also add other chopped things to this, like if you had bell peppers, um, onion, um, other things like kale, whatever that's going into your salad, you can spin dry it all at the same time if you want. So then you just put the lid on and pump it. And if you guys want this salad spinner, I have a list on my bio. If you click on my bio um, or in the description box for the YouTube video, you can find Lissa's list. It's got all of my favorite kitchen tools and stuff, and this is on there too. So if you want to go check that out, I just got this at Bed Bath & Beyond. Um, and I think it was like $50 or something. I'm not sure, but I bought it a couple of years ago. Um, is your sink water filtered? No, but we have pretty good water here in Ashland, so I'm not too worried about that. Um, I don't get too worried about little things like that, um, just because I get crazy with it. Like it kind of, it's like too much to think about, like having filtered water separately to wash everything. It's just too much, and I'd rather just be able to make my salads and, and try not to worry about whatever's in the water, <laughs> just because it, like I said, can get to be a lot. 
Um, where can we find more info on the veggie wash you're using? Link in my um, bio for Norwex. I'll show you. Norwex. This is the fruit and veggie wash that I use. Um, so yeah, head over to there or you can send me a direct message after this IG TV or YouTube. Send me a message and we can chat about it. Um, but yeah, this is the coolest salad spinner. Yeah, this is awesome. And then there's even like a little, a little stopper and you just push it and it stops. So there we go. We've got dried lettuce for lunch salad. And here's all the water that's left over from it. Sweet. So just dump that. And then I can grab my salad bowl and there we go. Now I'll just have to rinse off my salad spinner. Get all of that lettuce in there if I can, <laughs> as much as I can. Uh, yes, it's awesome. I love, 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 love having that salad spinner. And I like to also chop lots of salad. Like I'll, I'll not just chop two heads. I might chop like six heads or a whole six pack of romaine, wash it all at once and then spin it dry. And then I'll put it in um, separate containers for later. Like, so I'll have lettuce already washed and chopped and ready to go for dinner. So that's a, a, a quick prep tip. Um, yeah, definitely need a salad spinner. Need a salad spinner. They're awesome and very easy, quick and easy. So also wanted to add tomatoes. So I'm gonna grab a cutting board. We'll do a purple one, a yellow one, and this heirloom guy. I'm gonna put three tomatoes in my salad. And how I like to chop my tomatoes, I like to go around the stem. So if it's really wide, I'll do two cuts, one and two. And then on the sides, typically I just do one. And then here I'll do one and then two. And then I'll just cut off the bottom. So that's all that's left of the tomato. And here are all my tomatoes. And then I just kind of chop them into pieces like this. So fairly easy, quick and easy. There we go. Sweet. All right, so we've got one done. Now we'll do the yellow one. This one's a little smaller, so I just go around four times. So like one, two, three, and four. There we go. Little piece and just chop the rest. Super easy, doesn't have to be a lot of work. And if you guys want to, if you don't have time to chop your tomatoes, you could just throw cherry tomatoes in your salad. That's a pretty easy, um, effortless <laughs> way to add tomatoes to your salad. So you could always do that. But I find this to be fairly quick. So because I love heirloom tomatoes, I do eat a lot of them. Um, so how do you keep it from turning brown? That's a great question. The lettuce turning brown. I find that it's okay for later or the next day, especially if you wash it this way. This way works a lot better, I find. But again, you're never going to um, completely prevent the uh, brown spots on there. But because I'm only chopping for later during the day or for the next day's lunch, it doesn't seem to be that big of a problem. And I'll still eat it. <laughs> It really is about if you can do it, like if you can make it work, then do it. If it's, if it's going to get you to eat a salad, then do it, right? Um, you don't always have to do everything exactly perfect the way someone else does it, but if it works for you and it gets you to eat a lot of raw salad, then totally do it. Where do you get your tomatoes from? I can't ever find one, fun ones like that. Um, these ones again in Medford, we get them from smart food service. It's, um, kind of like a restaurant wholesaler. They sell like big jugs of like mayo and stuff, but they also sell cases of fruits and veggies. So we find these around this time of year and probably for the next couple of months when heirlooms are in season. Uh, but they, we won't get them all the time. It's kind of more of a seasonal thing. So I'll just add all my tomatoes to my bowl. And what else do I want on the salad? Um, I think I'm just gonna keep this pretty simple today. We've got tomatoes and lettuce. I'll just spread those around like so. And then 
Let's also do some cool carrots, some carrots. I'm gonna put those in the center here. It's about a cup, a cup of grated carrots. That's an easy, another easy, quick thing. You could grate them yourself and just have them for a couple of days in the fridge. Um, when you lost weight, did you have any saggy skin? That's a good question. Um, we're, our skin is never going to go back to the way it was when we were underweight or not underweight, but normal weight or um, thinner. We're never going to get that skin the way it was. And especially if we were younger as well, but you can prevent saggy skin by first off eating really high calorie. And I don't mean high calories and fats and, and junky foods. I mean high calorie raw foods. If you can get over 2000 calories and your, your body isn't eating itself because you're under eating. So make sure that you eat around 2000 calories a day while you're losing weight. The key is going to be low fat. Um, this will really help your body not eat the muscle mass that's under your skin that's keeping it tight. Um, another thing is exercise. Obviously that's going to help with skin tightness and also slow weight loss. If you lose weight too fast, then your skin can't keep up with that and you'll get saggier skin. So those are a couple tips uh, for weight loss. Just lose it slowly, make sure you eat enough, make sure you stay hydrated. And especially from raw foods, it's easy to stay hydrated. So those are a couple little tips for that. And I'm going to, actually I'm gonna put the sprouts on last. Because I want to put the dressing on first, so we'll do we'll make the dressing here together. Are those cucumbers in the back? Yes, they are cucumbers. We've got cucumbers and we've got some basil as well. Um, but we normally buy like twelve cucumbers for about four days. We'll go through all twelve cucumbers really quickly. I could put a cucumber in here, um, but I'm saving those for cucumber noodles tonight. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I love cucumbers. So you're so awesome. I have to go. Good. Thank you for joining. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and yeah, so we're going to make a dressing now. I've got my Vitamix and we're just going to make a simple low fat dressing here. I'm going to do lemon and lime in this one because I like the combo of the flavors. So I'll just chop those two. Grab my lemon reamer this lemon reamer um i think i have this one in that lissa's list this exact one that you can get i got it at, i think at bed bath and beyond but you can order it off amazon this one's really cool because it catches the seeds so you really just juice it handheld like this and it catches all the little seeds again i don't mind if there's seeds in my dressing in the vitamix because uh the vitamix just blends it all so it's pretty simple but here we go. Thank you for interacting with us. I've learned a lot. Awesome. I'm glad you guys did. I love coming live and I really need to do more lives. Uh, Nate and I are going camping. We're leaving tomorrow night. So we're going to be making a lot of dressings um, and stuff, but that's all going to be on a YouTube video for you guys. We're going to film that. Um, I was suggesting to put the cucumbers in the salad. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I would, but this salad is pretty big as it is with the tomatoes and I had two heads of romaine. The only reason I did two heads was because it was um, small, but yeah, we're gonna save them for tonight. So we're gonna spiralize some cucumber and put those in our salad tonight. So here we go. There we go. All right, juiced lemon and lime. And then I'm also going to use some coconut aminos. We got these at Costco. Costco only carries them like twice a year so when they do we buy like a whole case of 12. <laughs> so when we just got some i could put about a tablespoon or so in there um and then i'm gonna add just a little bit of apple cider vinegar because i like that little bit just a little bit like a dash <laughs> um for that little vinaigrette style of flavor um how do the wrapped cucumbers differ from the other kind Oh yeah, great question. Um, those cucumbers I find are a little bit more solid. They're not so soft on the inside and we use cucumbers. We sometimes chop them in the salad and if we are gonna have cucumbers in the salad, we'll get the field cucumbers and peel them because they put wax on those. The ones in the plastic, they don't put wax on. That's why they put the plastic on. So it's either wax 
or plastic for the most part, unless you grow it yourself or you know for sure there isn't any wax on them, but we'll peel them. And these ones work better for spiralizing, which is how we personally like to eat our cucumbers. So that's how we'll do them. And that's why how they differ in my opinion. Um, how do you wash berries? Great question. I have this from Norwex. It's a net, it's a dishcloth really. And I love this thing because when there's like lettuce and stuff on the counter and sometimes you use a regular rag to wash it into the sink, they kind of like roll up into the cloth and you can't really even get them. It's like kind of frustrating. This one, I just go like this into the sink and it's done. This is one of my favorite cloths. But what I do for berries is you can have a bowl of water with a little bit of the fruit and veg wash, just fill it with water and put the berries in there, let them soak for a few minutes, rinse them with this. So you could put this in first, actually, maybe I'll show you. So you would have your bowl, you could put your cloth in first like this, right? Then you would fill it with water and a little bit of the Norwex fruit and veg wash. Or if you don't have the fruit and veg wash, you can use baking soda, you can use vinegar, um, whatever you want to use to clean. But we like to use this. It's quick and easy and it's enzymatic. So it actually eats away at um, the dirties. So you put the, the cloth in here, you put your berries in, fill it with water and the Norwex, let it sit, kind of filter around, <laughs> play with the berries a little bit. And then you can just put the sides up like this, one, two, three, four, and pull all your berries out. And then you could run that under water and get all your berries fresh and clean and then transfer them to a bowl um, and put them in the fridge. So you could do that with grapes too. So that's um, a great way to wash berries. Um, yeah, so thanks guys. Great questions. So I've got some lemon juice and lime juice and coconut aminos in here with a little dash of apple cider vinegar. And I'm gonna add some mustard powder. I'm probably gonna, I really sometimes don't measure. <laughs> so I'm gonna put, I'm guessing about a quarter teaspoon of mustard powder in there. And then I'm going to put about, let's see, I'm gonna do five dates. So a lot of people ask why I put so many dates in my dressings. And the reason is because they provide the calories. So each one of these medjool dates is about 60 calories. So if I put five in, that's 300 calories on top of the probably, I don't, I'd say there's about 300 calories in this salad. So that makes my lunch 600 calories, which is great. It's so much better than having uh, just the lettuce or a very light dressing on it. I like to have a lot of calories in my dressing. So that's why I use dates. Another reason why I use dates is because we like sweetness in our dressings, even if it's a savory dressing. I've had many people ask, well, I want savory dressings, but most of your dressings have dates in them. The reason is because we still need a sweet when we have a savory. It just makes it kind of like an overall better flavor when you add sweet. So if you didn't want this many dates, you could just put three or four in to get that sweetness and still a little bit extra calories. So I'm not sure how many I put in there. There might be five or six. I'm not sure. <laughs> I didn't count. But anyways, um, I'll just get those in there. And I think we've got a question. Nope. Hey guys. So glad to have you in the kitchen with me today. I'm really hungry too. So, <laughs> all right, I think I'm done with the cutting board. So then I'm going to add some garlic. I like a lot of garlic, so I'm gonna add a lot of garlic. Got um, this many. They're small though, they're little. There's five little ones in there, so put add that. Then I also want to add chia seeds. I thought about them, I'll be right back. Here we go, I got some chia seeds. So I'm gonna add about a tablespoon. So that's, a tablespoon is three teaspoons. So I have a teaspoon here, so I'm just gonna put three in there. I've been adding chia seeds to my lunch dressings, my low fat lunch dressings lately because it's good omega-3. And yeah, I'm gonna add that to help absorb the uh, fat soluble nutrients in the lettuce. Eight, seven, how many dates? I think, let me count the seeds. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six. 
There's six dates in here, so I counted the seeds. <laughs> um, six dates, a tablespoon of chia, a tablespoon of coconut aminos, a dash of apple cider vinegar, the juice of a lemon and the juice of a lime, and a quarter teaspoon of mustard powder. Then last two ingredients, smoked paprika and onion powder. I love onion powder. I'm going to put, um, I'm gonna put a teaspoon and a half <laughs> in. And for um, smoked paprika, this one, this one's a spicy one, so I'm only gonna do half a teaspoon, give or take. Uh, if you have the sweet smoked paprika, that one you could do a whole teaspoon and it wouldn't be as spicy. Now here you could add anything really like jalapeno or um, other spices. You could add curry powder if you wanted. There's so many other things that you could add. Next step is a little bit of water. So I'm going to use the fridge filter because the fridge has a filter. So I'm gonna put a little bit of that in here and I'm gonna blend it. So I am going to also leave a case of pretty tomatoes here and I will be back in about 30 seconds because I have to go blend this. So I'll be right back guys. Come write some questions and I'll answer some questions while I'm gone. substance on them which ones do you recommend to avoid that that's a great question most of the tomatoes like that I found are Roma tomatoes they're the good sauce kind of Italian tomatoes those ones you can get the oil off if you wash them with a fruit and veg wash and just get rid of that oil you could use a rag like the the Norwex rag to wash those ones um, but other than that uh, the tomatoes that don't typically have kind of an oily film on them are like uh, cherry tomatoes, heirloom tomatoes, organic tomatoes, um, hothouse tomatoes sometimes don't as well. So it typically, what I found is really only the Roma tomatoes and you could just definitely wash those in a good fruit and veg wash. Again, that's the Norwex. Link in my bio for Norwex. Norwex! Or in the description box below if you're watching on YouTube. Um, so yeah, is this recipe in your meal plans? No, actually, I just made this one up for you guys special. <laughs> so I like to play around with recipes and sometimes I'll make one, I'll be like, oh, this one's so good. And I'll add it to my next book, which I'm working on two new books right now. Actually, three new books. Um, Nate's Nice Cream book, my burger book, and a super secret special recipe book that I'm not gonna say anything about because it's very, very special. So that one's coming later on, like, the special one's coming about next year, but the nice cream book should be done in the next month if we can get enough time to finish it. Uh, otherwise, it'll be August. And my burger book should be in the fall, kind of like November-ish kind of time. So that that's the timeline. We'll see how well we stick to it. But this recipe is not in any of my recipe books. I just kind of made it up. It was meant to be just a really quick lunch dressing. So you guys have a, a wonderful recipe to try. Um, I believe your meal plans have a total day of macros. Do you have the breakdown for the individual recipes as well? I don't have a breakdown for the individual recipes in each one. That's a lot of extra work to do. I could have done it, but um, if you want to find the individual breakdown for each recipe, just enter every single ingredient into Chronometer and you'll get the total calorie count and all the nutrition facts in there. If you just enter in individually every single ingredient. Um, to do that. Um, love your hat. Is that from Raw Advantage? Yes, it is. If you guys want a hat like this, head over to the Raw Advantage. Chris Kendall. Uh, I got this at Woodstock last year and I love wearing it on um, bad hair days. <laughs> so I also like wearing it when I'm hiking and stuff. So 
Anyways, let's continue on here with my salad. So I have the dressing and you guys, I used one cup of water to blend this. You could add more water if you want, if you want to have it um, a little bit thinner, but this is about the consistency that I like and I'm just going to drizzle that over top of my salad here. And it smells amazing. It's kind of like um, a sweet maple. No, a sweet, a sweet mustard. Because I didn't put maple in this one. But you could put maple if you wanted. But I just used the dates for the sweetness. And then I always recommend that you rinse your Vitamix out as soon as you're done. Don't wait. Because then it gets difficult to clean. <laughs> so I'm just going to rinse that really quick. There we go. Lid. Just makes it easier if you rinse while you go. I have a lot of dishes to clean though. <laughs> I've been doing other stuff in the kitchen. But it's nice to have the wine mix all clean, ready to go for next time. And then, here's my salad. It's not very picture worthy, <laughs> so I probably won't take a picture of it for Insta, but um, maybe I will, maybe I will. And then I'm gonna put about, it's about a cup of pea shoots. I think that sprouts are incredibly important on a raw vegan diet. Sprouts are so vital to a successful long-term raw vegan diet. Um, we have some lentil sprouts going. As you can see, here's our lentil sprouts. And for anyone asking, this jar we got from Now Foods. We found it at the health food store or the co-op uh, down the street. And it's the company is Now Foods. So if anyone's interested, that's what it is. But we rinse these uh, lentils three times a day. And we've been so we soaked them. So basically you soak them overnight for eight to ten hours. And then once they've soaked, then you just rinse and drain the water three times a day for three days and then you've got sprouts. So it's very, very easy to do. And these ones are pretty much ready to go. I'll probably rinse them one more time and then transfer them to the fridge and we're gonna take those camping with us. It's gonna be fun. Um, just got a shirt from Chris Kendall. Awesome, yes, we have a lot of shirts from Chris too. I love them so much. Do you have a favorite place to buy your sprouting seeds? Yes, actually, it's called Perfect Foods Inc. here on um, Instagram. And I believe in the Lissa's List link in my bio, there is a link to them. If not, I will add it as soon as I'm done this live. Uh, but Perfect Foods Inc., they're from New York and they have all kinds of seeds. They have lentil, broccoli, radish, fenugreek, a couple others. They even have a sprouting kit that you can get as well. Um, that's where we've been getting our seeds from. We also do buy our seeds bulk, like bulk lentils just at the grocery store. They, see, they seem to sprout pretty well. They don't really have a lot of issues with them, but if they're older lentils, then they don't really sprout as well. So that's why it's recommended to get your seeds from um, a certified sprouting company. Uh, like Perfect Foods Inc. That's where we've been buying our seeds. So if you guys want to get them there, but yeah, here's my salad. It's a, it's a date mustard dressing with lettuce, carrot, tomato, and pea shoots. You could add other things to this. You could add green onions or red onion or anything that your heart desires you can add to your salads. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Do you have, let's see what else. Can you post a recipe for the dressing on the post? Yeah, I will add it to the description um, for YouTube and for IGTV. So if you guys missed any of the ingredients, you can find that. I'll also post it on my main wall for anyone who's interested. This smells so good. <laughs> I'm so excited to eat. So again, as we wrap up, thank you guys so much for spending time with me in the kitchen, washing my fruits and veggies and hanging out. Um, so one more time, this is the Norwex fruit and veg produce wash. It's enzyme based and it's really good. I only need a little tiny bit of it and you can find the Norwex link in my bio or in the description box. You can also direct message me if you have any questions about that. The dressing recipe will be in the description box as well as on a post on Instagram and on YouTube and on IGTV, everywhere. I mean, I'll just post it everywhere <laughs> for you guys. So yeah, thank you so much for joining me. And yes, tomorrow we are going to 
go camping. We're going to leave tomorrow. We have some filming to do at the farm. So we're gonna go to the farm first, do a bunch of filming there, and then we'll leave, come back here and we'll pack up. So I'm going to be filming everything that we take with us camping. We're going for three nights. So I need to make three dinners, two lunches, and three breakfasts worth of food. Breakfasts are gonna be really easy. We're just gonna take melons. We have a bunch of mangoes. We have tons of mangoes that we're gonna take. Bananas, apples, those kinds of things are really easy and they don't necessarily need to be in the cooler. We can just keep them in the back of the truck in the shade. Uh, they'll be fine. Tomatoes will be fine as well, but things like lettuce, green onions, and the dressings we're gonna have to put in the cooler. So I'm gonna show you guys everything that we're doing and everything that we're bringing. We're gonna make our dressings all here because we're not gonna be taking our Vitamix camping. We do have an inverter and we could take the Vitamix camping, but because we're only going for three nights, it's not necessary. So we're not, we don't have to make the dressings there because we can make dressings last three days. The low fat ones, like the one that I just made with you guys here, this one would be eaten on day one or two. And then the higher fat ones we save for day three or day two evening and day three because the higher fat ones, especially with garlic added, those dressings last longer. So they keep longer. So of course we would leave them for last and eat the ones that are more perishable, we'll eat those first. So again, I'm gonna show you guys everything that we're gonna take and we're gonna, I'm gonna take you along on our three day camping trip with our friends. We're just going to chill and I won't be online because we won't have internet. So I'm gonna miss you guys so much. I'm going to be filming YouTube videos while I'm there uh, because we're just going to be chilling. So it'll be fun. I'll, I'll do a lot of work out there too. I know it's like, I can't, I can't not work. I'm just, I'm obsessed with health and I love helping you guys. So yeah. Uh, heirloom tomatoes have less acid. Yeah, actually I find they're a lot sweeter, especially the yellow tomatoes. The yellow tomatoes are so much sweeter. Plus, um, these ones here, the kind of rose ones, they're a lot different than the typical hothouse. So this is like a hothouse heirloom and this is, uh, they're really, really soft and they are a lot sweeter. They have more flesh inside, not so much watery. These ones are more watery. These ones are more tomato-y, I guess. And these ones I find are less acidic, but if you want less acidic tomatoes, let them ripen um, until they're really soft. Like the harder tomatoes are going to be more acidic the riper tomatoes are going to be a little bit sweeter, but yeah, these ones, the rosé ones, I don't even know what the actual name, but the, they're kind of like a, a softer red. They're not so intense red, like the, I don't know if you guys can tell. It's just a little bit more on the pink side. These ones are a lot sweeter than the other ones, so yeah. Um, so thank you guys so much for joining me and I'm gonna go eat this lunch and reply to your messages and upload this to YouTube with the recipe. So until then, until the next one, I love you guys so much and fruit on.